I'm feeling pretty good. It's just the uh, my vertebrae. Oh boy. Just the neck pain. <clears throat> and your husband, is he better? Uh, he'll have a test on Wednesday. And I, and I see the doctor that's coming Tuesday. Oh, oh boy. Mm -hmm. So I'll let you know. Good. Yeah, I hope it goes well. Results. We'll yeah. have you there. Thank you. We are still in Hebrews looking at some fellows who define faith. And uh, so that's what we've been talking about, how the definition of faith has been extended to people. And we talked about some who are more well-known than others, and maybe that's a lesson too. You don't have to be among the most famous people to be uh, remembered for your faith. Barak is, is one who was a leader, but not doesn't have a whole lot of verses about him in the Bible. Uh, so we talked about some famous people, and uh, then uh, we were talking about some folks from the period of the judges. People like Gideon, a man with some fears and insecurities. Uh, most of these people of faith, in a sense, had fears and insecurities, just like we do sometimes. And uh, we get today, I think we closed last time with uh, Gideon and Barak. We were looking uh, at Samson. How can we say that a man like Samson finds faith? He seems to be a man who is a little weak in the head and who might be more properly used as an example of one who maybe didn't have so much faith. But he's mentioned in that verse from Hebrews chapter 11 where there's a number of names. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 32. Gideon, Barak, Samson. Uh, how does Samson make that list as a, one who defines faith? His crowning final thing. I guess it's... I also wonder why Samson. <laughs> Why not the mother? Because the angel appeared to the mother, and the mother stayed to hold the angel to her. His and mother, you said? That's in her mother, his mother. Okay. Is the one who, I mean, the Bible said, train up the child the way he should go. Okay. He go, he will not depart from that. Yeah. So when the angel appeared to the mother, the mother is the one who hold the child up to that extent, that this is all the Lord said. You must not touch your hair with Daisu and this kind of thing. You shouldn't drink this, you shouldn't eat this, up to that extent. So why not the mother is the one who is holding the faith, but something. I also, I'm thinking of it a lot because yeah, yeah. sometimes I don't know the definition of that side of how Anyway, it's a historical reason, anyway, by, I mean, a group yeah. of people that uh, think that this man, his faith counts and this, his faith counts. But to me, something don't come. Okay. We're looking at, in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 32, uh, some names, and we're saying that they define faith. And <laughs> Jacob was just saying, you know, in many of these cases, maybe it was their uh, mother or their father that defines faith because they brought them up in such a way that they were faithful. And uh, we'd like to know a lot more about the upbringing of Moses, perhaps. Uh, you know, how did he come to be loyal to his people? and evidence faith in that way. Might even like 
to know more about the upbringing of Abraham. Why is he faithful when evidently his parents and relatives served other gods? Uh, on the other hand, we look at some of these names here and we see they're held up as examples of faith, but they didn't do such a good job in bringing up their children. <laughs> and they had some problems there. Uh, David, Samuel, Gideon. Uh, so, but we were just focusing on how, why is Samson on the list? How does he define or exemplify the concept of faith that he's addressing in this chapter? He's a, he's a funny guy. He seems to be a very impetuous fellow. And yet in two instances in his career there, we're told that the spirit of the Lord came upon him. In one case, the spirit of the Lord moves him to tear a lion in pieces. In another case, the spirit of the Lord moves him to kill some Philistines. So it, he's not the only one. In the case of Gideon, the spirit of the Lord came upon him. Not everyone is that mentioned. Not every one of the judges is it mentioned that the spirit of the Lord came upon them. Maybe it did, but uh, and Samson is mentioned twice. And so, uh, you know, maybe he was amenable to the spirit of the Lord. I don't know how that works. Uh, maybe because uh, I believe, I mean, this, the Bible said the mother was I mean, okay. instructed okay. not to touch his head. The hair is, is clean. Yeah, there is a certain thing he shouldn't drink, he shouldn't eat, those kind of things. That's why okay. I'm saying that this faith that uh, Samson was counting on, he could have started from the mother. Because she believed in that, that the angel appeared to me. And I, I mean, what the angel said, I believe in that. That's why when you talk about Abraham, Abraham was spoke to, not by the faith by the father or the mother bring up or right. no, no, no. Right. He was called by the spirits, do this, yeah. and he does that. Uh -huh. yeah. But as for Samson, yes, <clears throat> the mother was converted. You are going to be pregnant. Don't do this, don't do this, don't do that. And the child that you are bringing up, should he eat this, should he drink this? And the mother stand by that. Okay. You see? Okay. Because something, all that I know that something believed that my mother told me that I shouldn't cut my hair. When Delana was confusing something, something believed in that my hair is my strength. Yeah. You see? Yeah. My hair is my strength. You see? So any time that something will prompt up, something believe that what my strength is what my hair. It's a, see? almost so, a childlike belief. We, in some ways, we don't call Samson childlike in his uh, kind of openness uh, to trickery. <laughs> and yet, he's a hero of faith. Uh, Michelle mentioned at the end when he's been blinded and made fun of and they bring him out to, as an amusement, he's able to pray to God for strength one last time and he's able to knock the building down. Although the prayer, if we look carefully at it, is more or less one of what, let me get back against these blisters. It's almost one of yeah, the things. I think it's the last one. Um, and yet, you know, there's another verse that sometimes overlook um, Judges 15, 20. If you're looking through Judges there at the end of that 15th chapter, Samson led Israel for 20 years in the days of the Philistines. Uh, some of the older versions would say judged Israel. Uh, so 
somehow that kind of is overlooked. Somehow he's able to kind of keep the light burning of resistance to the Philistines. And perhaps uh, we, we don't know, but implication is at least some faithfulness to God. So anyway. Must have been distressing uh, to his parents though with that whole thing about when he's old, he will not depart. He yeah, was pretty they, circuitous about it. They advised him not to marry. <laughs> but you're you're right, there's a whole story of Samson's how the angel comes to his mother, and then she tells the father, you know, we we're, were supposed to raise up this boy as a Nazarite. And uh, and the father goes to God and says, please uh, let the angel come again and teach us how to bring up this child so we'll have some more detailed information. So, yeah, they're held up as examples of really being true to God. But Samson is the one who makes the list. I guess he defines faith as, I, I said, he's amenable to the spirit of God. It came upon him at least twice. And he's one who, in time of trouble, prayed to God and led Israel. We don't know how effective or how wise his leadership was, but somehow he did it. So I don't know that. He's kind of like us. We have sporadic periods in our life. Sometimes we do stupid things. If you're like me, sometimes you do stupid things. Uh, and reap the consequences. But on other times, perhaps the spirit of the Lord comes upon us and we do something for someone or we confess Jesus or in some other way, show faith. I don't know anything on <laughs> And Samson, he said, a colorful character because movies have been made and all of starring mature and maybe a lot. But, uh, the next name, if there's no more on Samson, is even more obscure than Samson uh, back in Hebrews, Jephthah. And perhaps he's even more surprising to make the list of people who define faith than Samson. What do we know about Jephthah? What do you remember about Jephthah? <laughs> <laughs> no, he's, he's one of the judges. He had another name. Uh, Deliver uh, that, that was Solomon's other name. He's known for his rash promise that he yeah. his daughter to death. He's a he's a leader, uh, and he says, "Boy, you know, give me victory, and whoever comes out to meet me when I come home, I'll sacrifice to the Lord." Now, who would make a vow like that? You know, well, who's going to come out to meet him? His cow. An animal for come to the door. I can't. Maybe he thought his cow <laughs> was coming out, uh, or his sheep would come out. Sheep. But it was his daughter. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, that's been debated for the centuries. Did he really sacrifice his daughter? No, he didn't no, sacrifice no. his daughter. But he didn't. He, no, I, I. Well, yeah, he <laughs> debated about it, but I don't think he sacrificed his daughter. He, she sacrificed her uh, her marriage. I, I mean, I even did. Okay. Uh, that's yeah. one uh, approach to we, it. We, we uh, don't think of singleness in this culture uh, as so much of a, well, okay, you can say, well, it's fine. But well, you're talking uh, about back then that marriage and family was extremely important. Okay. Um, and so she sacrifices that because, you know, his dad and her dad can't sacrifice her as, I mean, some people, a few people do that, but I think after overall, two months, she returned to her father and he did to her as he had vowed. And she was a virgin. From this comes the Israelite custom that each year the young women of Israel go out for four days to commemorate the daughter of Jephthah the Gileadite. So, Why not go and sacrifice your life? I mean, I don't know. Well, my point is, is if, okay, if he offered her as a human sacrifice, then why don't the women that are to offer themselves as a sacrifice? Because they weren't supposed to do it. <laughs> but they also weren't uh, supposed to break their vows. There's a weird section 
Mm -hmm. Probably it's an impossible situation and he never should have put himself in. Yeah, yeah. The, uh, the law demanded the sacrifice of the firstborn of every family, but they redeemed them with uh, an animal or something. Anyway, Jeff, <laughs> uh, I guess I'm more inclined to the literal interpretation in that uh, <clears throat> verse, but uh, Jephthah is a, a fellow, if we were to describe him today in the context of Chicago, we say he's a street gang leader. <laughs> because that's what, he was kind of, uh, wasn't accepted because he, he was an illegitimate child in his family. And that led him, he was kind of, pushed away from society. And uh, so he got with some rough characters and lived with them. And so that's why I say he's kind of like a street gang leader in our times. But when the trouble came and the people wanted to rise up against their oppressors, they thought of Jephthah and said, will you be our leader? And he said, well, you know, if you want me to do something, you got to make me the boss all the time. And so they, well, okay. And so Jephthah had the courage to lead Israel against the oppressor. And I guess that's why uh, he's mentioned here in the Hall of Fame of Faith. In spite of his uh, kind of mistreatment and isolation, when he's called upon to fulfill a role, he accepts it. And it says, if you're looking at Judges chapter 11, verse 1, Jephthah was a mighty warrior. And uh, so that's one way to remember him. Uh, <clears throat> anything else we remember of Jephthah in uh, that chapter? Uh, oh, the, the people have been persecuted and uh, they, because they forsook the Lord, he sold them into the hands of the Philistines and the Ammonites. For 18 years, they oppressed all the Israelites on the east side of the Jordan in Gilead, which was half the tribe of Manasseh on the east side of Jordan in today's nation, uh, the Hashemite kingdom of Jordan. And uh, the Ammonites were there also. And uh, Israel was in great distress. Then the Israelites cried out to the Lord after about 18 years. Uh, you'd think they would come around sooner, but some of these periods of persecution were longer than that. But uh, anyway, that just kind of shows the spiritual state of the land. And uh, <clears throat> we have, the Israelites finally say, we have sinned. Do with us whatever you think best, but please rescue us now. Then they got rid of the foreign gods and served the Lord. And the Lord uses this fellow Jephthah, a strange choice. But one, again, we're told in his case, the spirit of the Lord came upon him and he led the people against uh, the Ammonites. He wrote a letter. The Ammonites said, we're going to get you for, uh, taking, for uh, fighting against us and overcoming our king when you were on the way to the promised land. And Jephthah sends him a letter recalling the history of Israel, how they wouldn't let the Israelites pass. And so the Lord authorized them. And so, I don't know if he wrote that letter, but so it's attributed to him. And uh, so maybe he, he was uh, more with it than we think. But he's remembered as a man of faith. Uh, he had the courage to lead Israel. He had the courage to stand up against the oppressor. And in spite of his rash vow, yeah, he made, I think there was a mistake. Uh, for sure, regardless of what the outcome was. 
we all make mistakes. Sometimes after a victory, that's just when we do the stupidest thing. <laughs> I was just going to say, I think uh, this list here shows that there is no formula. I mean, if you, okay. if, if you try to imagine what a hero of faith would look like, you can't. Because I mean, even if you pick David, I mean, David probably starts out being the best example you can, yeah. you can imagine, and then his life goes south. Yet God still loves him, and he still has this relationship with God, even though he makes mistakes, horrendous mistakes. Yeah. So it's just, there is no formula. It's like we, we can't look at someone, it's kind of like what, what Patrick preached today. You can't really look at somebody on the outside and say, oh, that's, that's a hero of faith. Yeah. Yeah. God sees their heart. He knows. We, we don't know. Uh, it's really who it's who's there when the crisis comes maybe we don't really know how we're going to react until the crisis comes uh, but we try to prepare for that anyway so Jephthah is, uh, is was a rough character uh, I always am interested in the way you know the tribes came to uh, help and some of them did but the tribe of Ephraim was mad at Jephthah why didn't you call us earlier and so they got into a war <laughs> with one another the Ephraimites against the rest of the tribe and Jephthah uh, he said well, you want to fight we'll fight and he wouldn't they tried to escape and he blocked them at the Jordan River unless you know the password you can't pass and they said the password was Shibboleth, but they couldn't pronounce it. Their accent caused them to say Shibboleth. <laughs> and if they said it that way, they were slain. So when I was growing up, Shibboleth was a synonym for a, a password, but that kind of been forgotten. Anyway, I'm always interested in the way that Jephthah handled that kind of violent <laughs> The same thing happened in the time of Gideon. They said, the Ephraimites said to Gideon, why didn't you call us earlier? And we want to fight about this, man. Why did they fight because you didn't call us earlier? Gideon's response was statesmanlike. He said, oh, you guys are really, you know, you're better fighters than we had and calm the situation down. I've always enjoyed the, the contrast between Gideon's uh, way of dealing with that and Jephthah, different way anyway. So some of the things that remain with me about Jephthah, but uh, maybe that, that's maybe that's the thing. He illustrates that there is no formula, even a fellow who's excluded from society and uh, can be used for God's purposes. So we, we shouldn't judge, well, so-and-so, he'll never be useful to God, or she's, you know, out of that. We don't know the state of people's hearts. So. But God does, that's the thing. God he does. He knows whose hearts he can yeah. work through, and whose yeah. hearts are just walled off from God. Yeah. Like David, his heart would open, the perfect example. Yeah. And he, these people also had some softness for God, or they they wouldn't be listed here. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Somewhere, maybe a small part, but they had it like Hannah, you know. Jephthah led Israel, or, or the older versions say, judged Israel for six years. I think it was. And uh, so, anyway, David is uh, more uh, remembered the house of David, the kingdom of David will be restored uh, was the fulfillment through Jesus. What do we remember about David? He's described by Samuel as the man after God's own heart. That's the most famous thing you remember. About. Yeah. David and, was anointed by uh, it, Samuel. David was anointed by anointed. 
Yes, <clears throat> anointed uh, at God's instruction to Samuel. He wasn't the most imposing fellow. Samuel thought his older brothers were more imposing and, and more likely to be king than David, who evidently already here, young guy comes in from the field and he gets anointed because God saw something in his heart. So often when we talk about David, we talk about mistakes that he made with Bathsheba, numbering the people. Uh, and yet, you know, he's a man who led, uh, was king for 40 years, uh, seven years in Hebron and uh, 33 years in Jerusalem. And uh, led the people to many victories. And uh, I guess we would also remember him as a man of faith for his uh, confession and uh, is seeking forgiveness from God. He had a, a tender heart. He had a courageous heart and a, a tender heart. And uh, had his family problems. In spite of his flaws, though, he's still considered Israel's greatest king. Yeah. Of all yeah. the kings they had. They had some great ones. Solomon yeah. started yeah. out great. But David surpassed him. They still honor David. The Jews today still honor David. Yeah. As, and that's why a lot, they name a lot of their children. They, I had my best friend in grammar school was named David. They, yeah. His parents were Jewish, and they named him after David. Yeah. So it's still very common. It goes on today. But he still has a lot of, a lot of influence with the Jews. Yeah, we're not all going to be kings, but uh, we can have some of those attributes of David. Faith in the, uh, the fight against Goliath, uh, we're up against the giant. Sometimes we face giants, whatever they are, what seem to be giants in our, in our lives. Mm -hmm. But it turns out it, it, the stone knocked this fellow out. And then some very small one becomes the threat there. But he's uh, he defines faith in that way, those ways. There's a lot about David. Um, he's obedient, repentant. Uh, the Psalms reflect. A, a deep sensitivity to God, some of which evidently written while he's sitting watching sheep. Others perhaps written when he's being chased by his enemies for years. And perhaps those trained him to be a better king and leader. Adversity uh, when Saul was after him. The contemplation uh, when he was a shepherd. Anyway, he had a, an interesting career. Samuel is the next one. What do you what do you remember about Samuel? He was the last judge of Israel. Well, he's not a warrior. He's, he's more, I mean, he's although he was straight. I mean, yeah, you have generals, but not every general is in the field. Yeah. You have generals back in the headquarters or whatever. What I'm trying to say is that he certainly wasn't, you know, a, a deliverer as a warrior, but he left the people in some victories, but, uh, but he was able to be. <coughs> the Jews against their enemies. Yeah. That's why I remember Samuel actually and more for the faith of his mother who, uh, okay. <laughs> who had not been able to have children and uh, went to the temple to pray and promise that uh, if God gave her a child that she would then uh, devote bring him to the temple so that he could devote his life yeah. to uh, to serving God. And she did just that. Um, and probably for the time that she did have him at home, 
uh, before she brought him to the town. I'm sure that she raised him to have faith in God. Yeah. So maybe you know, her faith kind of probably had a, a good influence on him. And he was, of course, influenced by the judge over there, uh, Eli, who was the uh, the leader, and uh, perhaps instructed him. And then perhaps that's one of the defining moments in uh, Samuel's life come very early when God is calling him. And he thinks it's Eli calling him. But finally, Eli says, you know, that's God calling you. I'm not calling you. Uh, when he calls, say, here am I, Lord. And maybe that's one of the more uh, defining moments in Samuel's life. Here am I, Lord. It, Isaiah, as Isaiah said, here am I, send me. Maybe that's the type of faith that uh, we need. Here am I, Lord. Use me. Here's something that I can do. It's, the message at that time was, you know, give a message to Eli. And you, Eli, your house is going to be wiped out. You know? But so, not the most pleasant of messages, but still, here am I. And the uh, Lord was then able to use him. He, here, Samuel says, here am I, when he's called to confront King Saul and tell him that he's done wrong. He has the courage to do that. He has the courage to call the people to rise against the Philistines at times. He had his weaknesses too. Eli had some problems with his children. Samuel had problems with his children. They didn't stay faithful. And so uh, that must have been a disappointment to him. That also, again, to me, I was still thinking about the whole thing. Those who are attributed to this reason. So was it God who mentioned those people to me? I mean, a historical reference to us today that is written now? I don't know. Yeah. Maybe. Because like how's uh, Momo saying right now, if you see the statue of Hannah, yeah. the way through Hannah, how she goes through and before promising God that if you give it to me, I will read. Yeah. You see, that kind of faith. But I don't know because they don't deal with women or this kind of thing. That's why they couldn't, I mean, I tried those things. I don't know. But I'm still thinking of it. Because the women, some faith side, you can see how bold they are and how faithful they are. Yeah. Their, their names aren't mentioned, but they're it's examples not, of faith. Exactly. You know, the mothers and, and uh -huh. fathers. And... So, because among the Elkanah's children, or someone became different. Yeah. Someone became different. So, I don't know. Uh, some of them we know the mother's name, some of them we don't. Uh, and yet, uh, how many of us derive faith from what we learn from our mothers? Yes. Uh, to the point about <clears throat> Samuel's sons were unfaithful, that leads to the people that asked for a king. So, I mean, there's even more disappointment for Samuel. Yeah. Um, it, I think God tells him, well, it's not you that they're yeah. it's me. But still, Samuel could, you know, can imagine have this guilt of. He didn't have the sons to kind of keep the the, the judges going. Yeah. Um, although he had done so much to try to keep Israel on the right track. Although none of these judges seemed like their sons set to go for you know, There was always a, a new person was raised up after a period. Of, anyway, uh, so those are the names. And then the prophets. If you want to know more about that, come on Wednesday night 
because we've started the study of the prophets. We looked at Hosea uh, last Wednesday. We're going to start looking at Isaiah uh, this coming Wednesday. But uh, the prophets uh, stood out in times of difficulty uh, and exemplify faith. Just the stuff that they said, like Hosea writes such dire predictions for the Israelites. And you'd wonder that, you know, the natural reaction of people is to silence the messenger. And yet uh, these men stood up in spite of that threat or that fear. And that's the same we face today. Do we stand up and speak what we believe or are we afraid that somebody's not going to like it? Anyway, uh, there's so many of those. We've got the 12 so-called minor prophets with the shorter books. Then you've got Isaiah, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, Daniel, larger books. I think Jeremiah is the one who gets like the worst of them all. I mean, I don't... I don't recall any, I mean, well, Hosea has to do with his wife, but Jose, Jeremiah really is the one who gets the worst in some of the prophets. In Kings mentioned, yeah. okay, are, you know, um, getting a little, you know, roughed up. Um, but I don't know anything in Isaiah, I'm going to Isaiah, I don't know anything in Ezekiel where there, these two guys are. I mean, roughed up by the people, yeah. okay, you know, by, by the Jewish people. Yes, they go through some sort of like extremity to convey their messages, like wandering around naked or, you know, or well, something like that. Um, but as as I'm, I'll, I'll take the one who you love the best. You know, he lost his wife. Uh, so, and he had. Had to sleep on his side for a long time. Went through a lot of things for it to to demonstrate uh, the Lord's message. Prophets. Well, hey, let's read about someone who, through faith, conquered kingdoms. Who conquered kingdoms? <laughs> a lot of them, right? The judges. Uh, David conquered kingdoms. Um, David conquered them. He was a yeah. warrior king, really, in the end. That's yeah. Great war. He got out in front of the troops and lead them in battle. You know, he wasn't the one that hold back. Yeah. Sit in the background and be a general. Get out there. Administered justice. Again, we see some. Samson was a judge for 20 years, Jephthah was a judge six years, Samuel, Eli, all of those. Uh, so they had to do something besides fight. Well, well I, I think that's what the phrase means to me. Well, the, the word there is um, same word for righteousness, justification. Uh, but I don't think administration means office, but more like, uh, I think perhaps better administration of justice Administered justice is probably a better translation. Um, yeah, yeah. So that they defeat, that's what this they, they punish the Gentiles, i.e., the, the enemies of Israel. That's, I believe, what he's trying to say here. I checked a couple references, and that seems to be what's being said here. Although there are a few that say that there was some sort of administration of judging, ju just judicial, but well, like I guess the not context is the same. Deborah sat under a tree, and uh, you know when people came to her with problems, she was able to deal with it in a godly manner. Yeah. We think administration of justice is is easy, no. but it, it was a time when they, they were trying to cheat each other with false weights. We read about that in Hosea. Uh, it was a time when people were stealing from each other, and uh, yet these people. Prophets called them out on it. Administered justice. 
Yeah, they, they weren't paid off. <laughs> they had to adjudicate disputes. Somebody had to do yeah, it. And it yeah. started in the time of Moses. They came to him for everything until mm -hmm. he started, yeah. started yeah. delegating people help. I mean, maybe they had delegates too, but that continues through the kings doing with David and Solomon. So they must have done it for the judges too. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Once he said you that everything is facing him. People have confidence in him. Yeah. And you do the right thing to, if there's a problem, <clears throat> to, to sort it out. So it was, it was, that was a big yeah. job. <laughs> That's the point. Uh, uh, let's see. What else? Uh, gained what was promised. And uh, think of Joshua in connection with that, the promised land. And uh, they, uh, through faith, finally, after 40 years wandering, they had enough faith to enter into the promised land, but still <clears throat> didn't get their job done completely and uh, were subject to temptation and idolatry. Uh, here's one shut the mouths of lions. Who's that? Daniel. Daniel didn't really do it, God did it for him. But because of his faith, perhaps, it wasn't time for, God still had some work for Daniel to do. Uh, shut the mouths of life. Quench the fury of the flames. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, or Hananiah, and Mishael, and Ezra. <laughs> anyway, uh, quench the fury of the flames and escape the edge of the sword. Uh, who escaped the edge of the sword? David, when Saul was after him. Elijah. Elijah right. him, yeah, after, when Jezebel was after him, Elisha faced some threats. Jeremiah, you talk about Jeremiah. Uh, the, the king didn't like what he said on a couple of occasions. One to put him in a pit Yes. And uh, another uh, put him in jail. Out of the miry clay is the song we sing uh, in connection with Jeremiah. Uh, escape the issue. Whose weakness was turned to strength. <laughs> we have saw of these had weaknesses. Who became powerful in battle and routed foreign armies. A lot of them did that. Bye. What's that? Who? Hezekiah. Yeah. Yeah. So many led militarily. That even those that haven't been named Othniel, the Spirit of the Lord came upon him. Ehud, Shangar, and <laughs> other <laughs> judges. Uh, for him. Women received back their dead, raised to life again. Stephen? Elijah. The widow, uh, the Shunammite woman, both Elijah and Elisha raised uh, people from the dead through the power of God. Boy. And uh, others were tortured and refused to be released so that they might gain a better resurrection. Uh, Jeremiah and Swan. They were not given. They were not given, they were not surviving. Yeah. When you give you any spice of torture and uh, imprisonment, some face jeers and flogging. Uh, Jeremiah. The dark, the dark side of faith now. Yeah, okay. Jeremiah on these two occasions. Joseph, going back, was in prison. Uh, unjustly. Uh, still others were chained and put in prison. They were stoned. Who was stoned? And the, All of the, the blood that Saul or uh, uh, Stephen. Who was stoned? Stephen was stoned. Paul was stoned. Paul. Uh, who else? 
from the blood of Abel to Zechariah, the son of Berechiah, stone between the altar and the, the, uh, the temple there that was uh, uh, probably the son uh, at the time of uh, Joash or Josiah, wasn't it? <laughs> anyway. Uh, we're out of time. <laughs> so, thank you for uh, listening to uh, these accounts. We'll, we'll take it up there next time and maybe, maybe finish chapter 11. We've spent a few weeks. But uh, I, I love this story. Some examples of what we can learn that you might gather. So who stoned him at the altar? Oh, I, the enemy? Yeah, the people. He was trying to 